I think we're good now. It recognized that like it was in the wrong orientation, so we're good. Okay, so it is 6.30. I know that everybody is busy because it's a school night, so I don't wanna wait too long. I'm just gonna wait a little bit longer um, in case anybody else shows up. Um, so I can make note of that and, you know, admit anybody who might be coming in. Thank you so much for making the time to join us. Um, this is the very first time that we've ever tried anything like this, but the professors told us that it might be a struggle that students are having. So we definitely wanted to, you know, try and meet you guys where you are at your houses, at your apartments, wherever it is that you are. Um, so just to give a little bit explanation of what it is that we're doing today, um, I have set up a bird's eye view in my house so that you can see me drawing. As you can see, I have, you know, everything set up, my, my paper, I have some pencils, I have some pencil sharpener, I have a eraser, I have tape, and we'll talk about why I have tape in a moment, and then I have a 45 degree triangle. I also have a metal ruler, and then I have some printer paper that I put below so that you can see what's happening. But I personally like to draw on trace paper or butter paper. Um, it's something that hover over Maria's drafting screen. Oh, okay, Jolene's just explaining something. I see, sorry. But yeah, so I have a butter paper as well that you can use to, um, yeah, draw on top of. So we're gonna talk a little bit about choices and things of that nature. In addition, we're gonna do an axon today. Just, I don't know if you know what an axon is. It's kind of like a 45 degree perspective. And we are gonna take the design from our sticker sheet that you can, we've made all of these designs, but we're gonna do this one. But we're not gonna do all of it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do half of it. So we're gonna do the first half hand-drawn, we're gonna do the other half drafted in AutoCAD. And then our third tutorial is gonna be in Rhino. And we're gonna show you how to 3D model this shape in Rhino. And then our last tutorial is going to be an illustrator where we are going to show you how to export your AutoCAD file or export your 3D model from Rhino and then do graphics in Illustrator. So it's kind of like a four part series, but it's all gonna be centered around this little image. And yeah, so we're gonna get started. Um, first things first, hi, my name is Maria. <laughs> I don't think I introduced myself. I am president of Afro Kai and I'm really happy that you guys all are here. Um, when I draw or when I hand draft, the very first thing that I do is I wash my hands. This might sound crazy, but yes, washing your hands is so important when it comes to drawing, when it comes to making models. You don't realize it, but your hands, have so much on them, not just germs, but oils and you know grease. And if you lotion your hands, you have the lotion from your hands on everywhere. And the moment that you touch the paper, you get all of those little greases and all of those little oils all over the sheet of paper. And then when you start drawing and you put the graphite or the marker on top of the paper that you touched with your oily hands, you end up smearing and smudging. And that might be one of the reasons why you're getting really blurry looking lines is because your paper is now covered in oils that, you know, really weren't there to begin with. So washing your hands is really important. Another trick that I've seen some students do is they'll use latex gloves whenever they make a model or they draw. Um, you can just slap on a pair, make sure that you're really, really cleanly and you're not touching stuff with your gloves because that defeats the point of the gloves. Um, but yeah, so I've washed my hands. I've already taken care of that. If you'd like to follow along, like I said, feel free. We're gonna be using pencils. We're gonna be using a pencil sharpener. We're gonna be using an eraser. We're gonna be using some tape and 45 degree triangle, a ruler of any kind, preferably if it were my choice, a metal ruler, they're a lot better than a plastic ruler, and then some butter paper. So let's get started. Um, Jolene, I am giving you full permission that if anybody posts a message or a question for you to interrupt me because I cannot see the screen with the setup that I've created for the bird's eye view. So I won't be able to see if anybody asks anything. So if they do 
just let me know and I'll answer any questions as we go. Okay. So like I said, this white backdrop is just so that you can see what we're drawing, but I have a cutting mat underneath it just so that I don't scratch up my table. So that's the other thing to be really mindful of when you're drawing is that you can possibly like puncture a hole or like scrape into the table, which is not fun. So we're gonna prepare our sheet of paper. To do that, you just saw me rip the butter paper or the trace paper as other people like to call it. And the way that I did it is by using my ruler. You want to flip it upside down so that the metal side faces downward. And then you want to rip it as if it were, you know, like aluminum foil or anything else of that nature. And that gives you a really nice crisp line. So I cut the first line just to get it going. And then we're going to rip off the second side. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but you just want to get a good start. There you go. We can put the trace paper away for now. And then our second thing that we're going to do is we're going to tape our piece of paper down onto the table. The reason why I enjoy taping my paper down onto the table is because I personally don't like the paper moving, especially with an axon. An axon is really important that you get really crisp 45 degree angles. And as a result, if your paper shifts underneath as you're drawing, or if you thought you were drawing a 45 and then the triangle moved, it, it gets really sloppy really fast. So I don't have, normally you'd use um, like a drawing tape or something like that. I don't have any on me, but I have a ton of um, this, you know, colorful paper tape. You can get a bunch of different colors. You just want something that rips easily and that isn't going to leave a lot of residue. Wait, so, Maria, are we um, recording it? Yes, I am. Already? So yeah, if you'd like to rewatch this at any point, it will be posted on our YouTube channel. And you can, you know, follow along there later if you want to. So I'm just going to really quickly tape the tracing paper down onto the white sheet of paper. Make sure that it's laying flat. You'll notice that I laid it down in a very specific orientation. Because trace paper is rolled, it has a curve to it. So you always want to put the paper so that it is facing downward and not up because then it's going to curve away from the flatness of the table. So then we're going to do the second one. And then here we're going to do our third. So an axon, like I said before, is all parallel, perpendicular, and 45 degree angled lines. So what I like to do to start any axon is draw, can you see that? I think you can, yeah, it's still in view. Okay, so the very first thing that I like to do, I think somebody else joined and I didn't even notice it. Oh my goodness. I should have gotten rid of the waiting room. Okay, we're good, Never mind. I admitted them. So the very first thing that I like to do is I like to draw a, what I like to think of as a zero, zero line. So th this is the line that we're gonna base all of our other lines off of. So it's not necessarily a line that's part of the drawing, but it is a line that's important to the drawing. And the reason why is because whenever we do a 45 degree angle or a perpendicular line, we're always gonna refer back to that original line. So in my little toolkit of pencils here, I have 6B all the way up to, I think, like a 3H. Some of my pencils I use more than often, so I no longer have them. But this is good enough for us to begin. And I'm going to start off with a 2B. We're going to sharpen our pencil away from the paper. Preferably, what I like to do is I like to sharpen it on the lid of the actual case. And then that way I don't have to worry about any graphite getting onto the paper that I could potentially smudge off or just smudge in general and then ruin the drawing. So we're gonna sharpen our pencil really quickly. We want it to be nice and sharp, but not too sharp because you could also rip the paper. And then we're just gonna draw a line. It doesn't, we're not referencing to anything else. Maria, it froze for me. Oh no, did it? I think it did. Can you see now? Yeah, it's just sideways. 
Oh God, it did it again. I'm so sorry that this is happening, you guys. There again, go. this is like the very first time that we've ever done this. There we go. I'm just trying to make sure it's straight. Okay, so yeah, we are going to draw a line. And when I like to draw lines, I like to just let the weight of the pencil do all the work. I don't know if that makes sense in terms of um, like your understanding of drawing, but when you're drawing, if you push too hard and it's a really, really soft lead, it could crumble. And if it, you push really hard and it's a really, really hard lead, it'll actually just snap in half. So you don't want to like push the pencil deep into the paper. That's not going to help. Okay, so we've drawn our very first line. And like I said, this is our reference point. Ideally, you don't want to brush too much, but if you see a little speck, try to brush with the back of your hand, because normally if you have oil, it'll be on the front of your hand, like on your palms and not on the back. So from here, we're going to draw a 45 degree line. And like I said, we're going to use this line. So I'm going to do it over here because I want it to be in the center of the sheet. So we line it up. And then we're gonna draw our very first reference line. So a reference line is crucial to the drawing in the sense that this line is going to help us line up all the other lines, but we want it to be really, really light. We don't want it to be the focal point of the drawing. We only want it to help guide us to the next portion. So I here am using a 3H. It's a really, really strong lead. And again, we're gonna put just the tiniest bit of weight so that it doesn't come out really strong. There we go. Oh no, it's like super light because it's trace paper so you barely see it. Let's try that again. I might have to go a little bit less. Let's try an HB in that case. Again, you, if possible, start out really light. Like you can always darken a line, but you it's much harder to try and lighten the line after the fact. So now we're going in with an HB and we're gonna do that exact same thing. We're gonna line it up to that line, our reference line. And then we're just gonna really lightly apply just the tiniest amount of pressure. And then there you see, we have that first line. I'm gonna straighten it out a little bit I just noticed that this edge of my triangle is jagged, so I'm gonna flip it over to the other side because that's a much cleaner crisp edge. So we have our first 45 degree line. This is really important because from here is where we're gonna start doing the perspective. So when you do an axon, you wanna draw a line and then you wanna measure, if that makes sense. So, before we started, I drew myself a little guide of all the measurements that we're gonna be using in our drawing. But if you notice, I drew the line and then I put a little dot. So we're gonna do that same kind of method here. So the first line that we're gonna draw is going to be an inch and a half. Let me double check that. Never mind. it's gonna be a two inch line. So then, what I'm going to do is that from that corner point where the two lines intersect, I'm going to line up my ruler and I'm going to draw a dot wherever this, that point is. So at, if it starts at six, we're going to draw the dot at four inches. And you want it to be, again, really, really light. It's just to help us reference what it is that we're doing. So from there, I need a line that's going to go per perpendicular to our original reference line. So to do that, I take my triangle, I scooch it on over, line it up, make sure that it's intersecting with that other line, and then we draw our next reference line with HB. There you go. So you can start to see how these points are gonna intersect and how the lines are really soft, really crisp. From there, we're gonna start going in the other direction. So the way that we do that, let me move my pencils. There we go. The way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna do exact same thing, but in the other direction. 
So we're going to line up our triangle to that little corner and we're going to draw another reference line going in the opposite direction. There we go. So from here at that intersection point, I now want a line that's going to go upwards. I'm just going to line it up to that reference line with my 90 degrees and draw a line that goes up. There you go. So as you can see, it, they, we literally have only drawn one, two, three, four, five lines, and you can already start to see the shape start to form. So this is the corner that's closest to us. This is the first wall of the building. And over here, we're gonna draw the second wall of the building. So drawing an axon is really easy. It doesn't take a whole lot to learn and grasp. It's only just making sure that you're being patient with yourself and that you're really, you know, using the right lead for the right application. So we have our first building right here. This line is two inches. We're going to go up. So if this is all one wall, the same length that we go up on one line needs to be the length that we go up on the other line. Because that way, when we draw a 45 degree angle line, it'll connect perfectly. So let's do that and I'll show you how to do it. So the next measurement that we're gonna do is a kind of wonky one. So I apologize, but it's actually 13 16 So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up our ruler to this line and we're gonna measure up 13 16 So that's eight halfway and then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, right here. Wait, ah, I messed up. Yeah, right there. Okay. And then from here, we're gonna do the same thing from this point of intersection. We're gonna go up. Wait, Maria, is it two and a half or is it two and then to 13, 16? Um, so the first measurement that we did was two, so that's gonna be the bottom half or the bottom edge of that wall intersecting on the ground. And then the second measurement that we did is 13 16 and that's the measurement that's going up. So that's the wall portion. So what's gonna happen is that because we measured the same distance up, when we, that triangle just went flying out of my hand. When we take our triangle and we line it up to that bottom reference line, the very first one that we drew, if we've done it correctly, we can scoot the triangle over and you'll notice that at some point, the two of them will line up. So like right there. And then from here, we're gonna draw our third panel. So you can see this is now a wall right here, right? And then to do that same thing on the other side, we don't even have to measure it. We honestly just have to take our triangle, line it up to that bottom reference line, make sure that it intersects with that spot, and then just draw another line. So I don't know if anybody here likes to play Sudoku. I love it. And I kind of think that drawing an axon is kind of like a Sudoku puzzle in that sense. Like the moment that you start drawing in the lines, you start to see how they all correspond and you don't even have to measure the next one. You can just line it up to that dot and draw it across. So here we have our first panel. We're gonna draw the next one over. So this next measurement is going to be an inch and a quarter. So it's gonna be along this line and we're gonna do an inch and a quarter. So I'm gonna get my trusty metal ruler again, line it up to that point of intersection, and then measure out an inch and a quarter. So we're gonna draw our dot right here. And what I do again, referencing that bottom line, if you focus on just making sure that all of your drawing is back on that reference point, it's going to be so much crisper. Your angles are gonna be really, really nice and neat. You're not gonna have to worry about like, oh no, 
it looks completely out of whack <laughs> because I didn't be mindful about all of that. All right, so here, you're gonna notice that when you're doing it all with your reference lines, it, at some point, it will be hard to tell what's what. So what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna grab a heavier lead. So right now we're using an HB. So what you could probably do is go in with like a 3B or a 4B. I'm gonna go in with a 3B and I'm going to, once again, sharpen it before we use it. Because it's really good to have a nice crisp point. Make sure we don't have anything on our fingers or nothing on our page. If you do, you can just blow it away. Um, I don't have mine, but I used to. You also get like these giant brushes. You can brush it off and then that way you don't have to worry about smudging stuff. So that's also a really good option if you have one of those big drafting brushes. So what we are gonna do now is we're gonna go in and we're gonna darken the lines that are actually part of our drawing. So the reference lines, we're not gonna erase them. They're important and they're also good to show how you developed your drawing. Um, but if they're all the same line weight, your drawing isn't gonna make sense. What really makes a drawing pop and makes it really readable is varying line weights that help the reader understand depth or understand importance, which is why when you see, for example, a 30 year section drawing, it reads really well because they use the line weights to their advantage. The same thing applies to hand drafting. If anything, hand drafting was the predecessor of digital drafting. So you could say that it originally started here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over, but we're only gonna darken the spots that we need to. So I know that this bottom portion, but not the rest, is important. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to just really quickly darken that line. There we go. So you already see how it pops and looks much more intense than the original reference line. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Ah, there we go. Again, if anybody has questions, like please, I ask you, post them in the chat. Jolene will let me know that there's questions in there and I can totally answer something that might come up. There we go. And then our next two lines that we're gonna do are the lines that go up. So from here to here. My first year professor always told me, You're, it's okay if you move the pencil away from the page, but never move the triangle or the ruler until you're satisfied or until you're sure that you got it. The reason why is because if, you, if I were to start drawing a line and then I move the triangle away and I'm like, oh, dang it, I missed the little corner. Lining it back up to the original line is nearly impossible. Like it's gonna look terrible. So for example, just then I realized that I missed the tiniest corner, but I, because I didn't move my triangle, I could go back in really easily and just fix it. There we go. So here we start to see how the building is starting to develop. The important thing here though, is you'll notice that in our original, just quick sketch that I drew, this line doesn't exist. This one right here. It helps us to realize where that roof line starts, but this isn't a real line, this is still building. So we're not gonna darken that one, but we're not gonna erase it, like I said. Never erase any reference lines. Your professors want to see them. If anything, they'd be very impressed if you'd submit a drawing with like hundreds of reference lines because you don't, you don't see that very often anymore. There we go. Okay, so we are starting to build up our building from the bottom up. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna extend the building out to meet the other chunk of the coad. So we're gonna go back in with our reference line. I have an HB once again. And we're gonna line it up with the original bottom line that we did. And we're gonna go out. So 
imagine it as if the building is now protruding towards us. So we're just gonna really quickly draw in that line. And then once again, once you've drawn the reference line, you can go in and do the measurement. So the measurement for this little portion right here of the coat is gonna be a fourth. So again, I line up my ruler and I draw the dot at a fourth right there. A little baby dot, nothing too intense. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna push that portion up. So line it up with the dot, there you go. And then we're gonna draw another line going up. So as you can see here, we had an angle that was facing out, like facing me. Now here we have an angle that's going in. So instead of this, we have that. So we're gonna really quickly darken that line. You could either do it one of two ways, honestly. You could possibly do all of your reference lines and then go in at the very end, all in one step, and darken the, only the lines that you need. Seeing as how this is the very first time that we've done this, and I wanna make sure that you can visibly see how the drawing is starting to develop and grow, I'm doing it little by little, which is just as valid, but the moment that you use a darker lead, it's harder to keep clean, if that makes sense. Like an HB, you can keep that neat for a really long time and not have to worry about smudging. But the moment that you add like a 3B or a 6B, especially a 6B, to your drawing, it's more likely to smudge and it's more likely to look messy. So it's just something to make note of and, and keep in mind. So again, I'm gonna line it up to that bottom edge, scooch it over so that I make sure it's intersecting where it needs to be. And then I'm just gonna fill in that little quarter of an inch line. There we go. And then we're gonna go up. So this next line, our measurement is gonna be an inch and a fourth. So we're gonna pull out our ruler and you're gonna do an inch and a fourth. So an inch and a fourth right there. I find drawing to be really relaxing. Like if you can find a good podcast or a good playlist, something that you enjoy listening to, if you manage to like just zone out and just draft, you could, you know, go for hours in my opinion. Okay, so here what I'm doing is I'm lining it up once again with that line to darken it, just so that we can see it, like I said again. But for some reason I'm having trouble lining it up. Okay, I think I got it. There we go. And then we're just gonna... There we go. Okay, and then we're just gonna go in and then bring that down. Okay, so this portion of the building of the coad, if you haven't noticed, is shorter than the portion in the center, which is why this line is taller. That is on purpose. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come across and connect to the back of the building. So we're gonna line up our triangle. Once again, we're just gonna scooch it over so that it intersects with that point right there. And then we're just gonna draw a reference line. Super light, happy accidents are okay. You know, be kind, treat, treat your drawing like Bob Ross would, don't get angry at it. Okay, cool. So we drew our reference line. Our next measurement is gonna be two inches and a half. So we're gonna line it up to that corner. And I'm gonna go, there we go. Two inches, so one inch, two inch and a half right there. Perfect. And then here, we're gonna bring it back down to connect to the floor. Right here. So 
There you go. So I'm gonna darken this line and then we're gonna take a quick moment to talk about some perspective tips. Okay, here we go. Okay, cool. So here we have the first half of our building. You're gonna notice I haven't done the roof yet, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that now. So this li these lines are really easy because they're perpendicular to the ground. So when a line is perpendicular to the ground or parallel to the ground, it's always gonna be 45 degree angle or vertical. It's never going to be a wonky angle. So your triangle is really useful in that sense. You just have to follow it and it'll the, the drawing will appear before your eyes, I promise. But this part of the building is not perpendicular to the ground. It's a sloped roof. So this means that this line is no longer a 45 degree angle line. This line is now a crazy angle <laughs> that Honestly, to figure it out, you'd have to do some math to, you know, figure out the slope and then convert that to a perspective. Um, it's not as hard as it sounds. It's just, you need to be mindful of it. You can't just draw like whatever it looks like because it, it wouldn't look right. So what we are gonna do is, Another, one way that like you can do it is you could measure down how far it is. So that's that's the method that I'm going to do is we're going to measure across how much distance is from the top of that roof line to the top of this roof line and then we're going to build it from there. So this is what we have so far and then that's why for example we have these lines as of now. So if I were to take my original drawing and just measure, here, let me do it this way. So I'm gonna, do, do, do. I've, there we go, oh my goodness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw here a line, and then I'm going to draw here a line. Perfect, okay. So now I've kind of like made a new grid. And then, I don't know if you can see, oh no, I have people in the waiting room and I didn't realize it. Okay, they've been admitted, so that's okay. Perfect. I'm so sorry to the people who just joined us. I can't see the screen because I'm currently drawing, so I didn't realize that you were in the waiting room. My apologies for that. <laughs> I should have disabled that before I started and I didn't think to. Um, so I'm just gonna really quickly, in that case, take a quick break and fill in the people that just joined us. Right now we're drawing an exonometric drawing um, using a 45 degree triangle, some lead pencils, a ruler and some tape to tape down the paper. That's all you need. It's a really easy drawing. We are referencing a quick doodle that our chapter made for our little sticker set. And we're only gonna do the first half of it. The second half is gonna be drafted in AutoCAD. And then the third portion of our tutorial set, we're gonna show you how to 3D model it in Rhino. And then the fourth set of our tutorial series, we're gonna take those drawings into Illustrator and show you how to do graphics and the interface of like Adobe products. So as of now, we've done a good chunk of reference lines and we've already started to darken in the lines that are important to the drawing. We're going to tackle the roof line next. So what I'm doing is I am lining up, I really should have done right there, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up our triangle to that little roof line and we're going to draw across if that makes sense. So I've drawn in the line of where the roof ends. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna measure up. So I'm once again gonna draw another reference line, but this one is going to be hitting that top of the slope. 
So right there, perfect. And then what we're gonna do is this measurement is going to tell us where the top of that roof line is, and then we can just connect the dots. So instead of worrying about what this angle is, it's much more easier to treat it as if it's like a right triangle, if that makes sense. Like, if this is my right triangle, I don't wanna try and figure out, you know, what this angle is. I'd much rather try and just figure out what X is and then treat it as like a line across, if that makes sense. Personally, I think that's the easier way, but you could figure out the slope through math and then go from there if you wanted to. You could probably find another tutorial of that on YouTube. Okay, so now that we've drawn that, I'm gonna quickly measure to see what that measurement is. So it looks to be half an inch. So we're gonna go back to our drawing and we are going to, from here, also measure how far that is from our original line. So it is, ah, there you go. It looks to be about 14 16 yeah. So I'm just gonna measure 14 16 to my original file, right there. Oh, I'm using the wrong pencil. Oh, no, wait, no, I'm not. Okay, we're good. So right there. So this point going up is going to be where the top of that roof line hits. So we're going to draw another reference line right here. Just going straight up. And so we said that from the intersection of that wall up, I think we said it was quarter of an inch. When in doubt, always re remeasure. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven sixteenths? Eight sixteenths? I'm going to say seven sixteenths. Yeah, I don't think it's half, just quite. So it's this line, and we're going to measure up seven sixteenths. Right there. Perfect. So like we said, we drew the dot of where the top of that roof slope is. And now don't worry about lining it up because you're gonna see that it's not. So just use the line or the flat edge of your triangle and connect the two dots. Right there. And we're gonna treat it as if it's a reference line because it is. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Right there. Let me scooch it over a little bit. Okay, right there. Perfect. So as you can see, there we go. We have that done. So I'm gonna go in with my darker pencil now to finalize that slope. It's not too hard. I promise anybody can draw. If you're the type of person who thinks, oh my goodness, this looks so complicated. I'm never gonna get there. I promise you, you will. You just have to practice and just, you know, like I said, be kind to yourself and be kind to your drawing. Just like the drawing develops with time, your skills shall also develop with time. Oh no, I went a little bit too far, okay, so. I made a mistake. I'm gonna show you how we fix mistakes here. So I'm just gonna bring this down. As you can see, I went a tiny bit too far, just the tiniest bit. So one method that you could use is you could treat it with like a sock, a, a, a eraser sock, my bad. So eraser socks are um, these things that you kind of like shake and it's filled with little eraser pieces. And then you can just like, erase the smudge if you have a little tiny smudge. But you could also use, let me pull it out of my box, a electric eraser. So some people don't know this, 
but there are such things as electric erasers. They look like this and they come battery powered. Back in the old days, back in the 70s and 80s, these things used to come with like giant plugs and they'd plug into the wall and then they'd come with these giant eraser sticks they'd have to like shove in. But this is a, a very modern one. So you put batteries in it, turn it on and then it spins and you can just like It's very handy when you're doing a lot of drawing. I never have batteries on these, so I go with this version of an eraser. I find it a lot easier and a lot better. I never have to worry about, oh no, the battery died and now I can't erase. So when I erase, I don't go in and just, you know, make it a wrist motion. I make it kind of like a finger motion. I tend to rotate it a little bit more than like a shaking. And I find that that gives me a little bit more control and precision over the actual erasing of the line. So you just want to like very gently, there you go, twist. And then all of a sudden you'll notice that that little chunk that we went over is gone. So yeah, again, mistakes happen. Don't, don't try and avoid mistakes. Just learn to adapt. Okay, so we drew our slope to the roof. Now we're going to extend this back. So we said that this line that connected was not 45 degrees, but this one is. And we lucked out in that sense because this line is per or parallel to the ground. So to connect it back, all we have to do is connect it with a 45 degree angle. So we're just gonna come back and right there, go in with our reference line very delicately. And then we're gonna measure this line. So the measurement that we're gonna go off of is a full inch, no, an inch and a quarter, yes. So we're gonna line it up our ruler to our drawing. And we're gonna go an inch and a quarter. So a full inch and a quarter is right there. which coincidentally lines up to where our back building is, which makes sense. Like that, if, if you notice that there's already a dot there, you know, that makes sense and that's correct. You know, it should do that. Your points should start to line up around halfway through the drawing, if you're doing it correctly at least. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna darken that line. So once again, line it up. It's all just patience. I, I, I really mean it. You can't rush a drawing. I've heard stories that these kinds of drawings would take, you know, days. It's, it's totally okay if it takes you a while. Just keep persisting. Okay, so I totally forgot. I was going to keep drawing and I wasn't going to explain it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replicate that same slope. So we know that this is where the wall ends and then that this is where the slope of the roof ends. So we're just gonna connect the two dots. I should probably do that with an HB before I do it with a dark lead, just to be consistent with what I'm teaching. There we go. So we're gonna draw a reference line and then we're gonna go in with the darker lead and connect the two. So you'll notice they are parallel lines and they look great. Like that looks so good, like wow. Um, <laughs> now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the back. So we're gonna connect to the other side of the building really quickly. I'm gonna get some water. I don't know if anybody has questions. Maybe this is a good time. I don't know, Jolene, if there's any questions. I think some people are having issues coming inside. Oh no. Are there more people that have been admitted and I haven't realized it? Um, someone tried to like join and then, but like they joined a little late and then they were not able to join. I don't know. Oh no. Well, I don't see anybody that's tried to join and hasn't been admitted. So that's good at least. Okay, I have some water. Let's keep going with this. We're almost done, which is the really cool part. 
So from here, we're going to measure, or wait, no, we're going to draw the reference line. I forgot that I hadn't drawn it yet. So we're going to line up our triangle to the bottom line, make sure it intersects with where our roof line is. We're going to go in with our it froze. Huh? It froze again. Did it freeze? Oh, it froze because I was looking at the people, whether they had joined or not. I'm a dummy. I know better than to do that. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. That's what I thought. Okay, cool. Thank you for letting me know, Jolene. And I've made sure it lined up. Okay. So, lined up my triangle to the bottom reference line. I made sure it intersected with where our roof is. I got my HB for reference lines. And then we're just going to draw a super light one across. And here you see the building is starting to come together. The only thing though is we don't know where this back line is gonna go. Does that make sense? Like we could easily connect these two. So what we need to do now is we need to measure how far that line was and then go back the same distance. So this is one of the very first lines that we did. It measures an inch and a quarter. We're going to line it up again, draw that inch and a quarter right there. And then now you see from that dot to that dot, those two lines will now be parallel. So really quickly, we're going to do those two lines. There you go. We're going to come across and then we're going to darken it. Perfect. There we go. And then we're going to darken this one right over here. Right there. I just noticed my pencil is starting to get dull. Don't be afraid to take a moment to sharpen your pencils. We're gonna sharpen the other one while I'm at it too. And then that way I'm gonna go back in and clean that line up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Oh no, there we go. Right there, okay, cool. I noticed that I haven't darkened in this line over here on this side, so we're gonna do this one as well while we're at it. Right there, scooch up my triangle a little bit. Okay, I had a minor mishap. And I drew on the paper, so I'm gonna erase that. Okay, so we have our little building and it looks just like it should, as you can see. We just made it bigger, but it has all of the same proportions, all of the same shapes. And you see all of the lines that led to making that <laughs> tiny side of the building. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually draw the intersection point. So we're gonna stop right here at the red. So we're gonna draw this little chunk and then we're gonna talk about, you know, let's say you wanna do some more stuff, we're gonna get into that as well. So we drew our original line for that edge of the building. So we already have that. Now what we need to do is figure out at what point on the other side does that building end. So we know that it, oh wait, no, I think we already did that. Yeah, it's this one right here. I totally forgot because it was two and a half inches. So we have that line. So we drew this line originally and we drew where it came down, but we didn't darken the line. The reason why is because if we had darkened this line all the way down, when we drew this side of the building, it would have looked incorrect. So sometimes you can't darken your lines until you draw the stuff that's in front of that line. Does that make sense? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go in and we're gonna finish the drawing. So we're gonna come over here, line it up, and then we're going to just 
darken only to where we then intersect with that building. And then we're gonna darken this one right up here. There we go. And then that is our building, up until that wall at least. That's the first half of the building. So we talked about line weights, we talked about reference lines, we talked about how to draw an axon using just a triangle. We talked about, you know, methods to keep your lines looking really crisp, really sharp, uh, methods of, you know, how to measure and then draw. But what I also want to talk a little bit about is a third kind of line. So we're going to pull out a 6B. Some professors, not all of them, some professors in the co-ed like to believe that there's a third kind of line weight. And this third line weight, in an axon at least, connects the building to like the sky, is a way to think of it. So we have our reference lines, which are really light. We have our darkened lines, but we're now gonna add a third kind of line, which is anywhere that the building touches the edge of the drawing, or like the the edge of the drawing, we're going to darken it. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what it is that I mean. And it's kind of like creating a bounding box or connecting the building to whatever it is that's around it. That was a little bit too sharp. So I'm going to, there we go. Okay. So this third kind of line is only going to be on the edges that don't touch the inside if that makes sense. So I'm going in with the darkest line weight I have, which is a 6B. And we're just gonna go in right here and make it a really dark line. We're gonna do it on the other side. The reason why I'm, I left the 6B for last is like I said earlier, the darker the lead, the more likely it is to smudge and the more likely it is to create a mess. And we don't wanna do that. So I'm leaving it for the very, very end. And then right here, we're gonna darken this one right here. You're gonna notice I'm not doing any of the lines on the inside. We're only doing the ones on the outside. Oh no, my phone is buzzing because there's an angle alert. <laughs> I was freaking out while that was happening. Okay, there we go. I didn't, I only darkened half of this line because the other half is inside of the drawing. And then we're going to come up, make this line darker. We're gonna come across to connect to the other side. And then we're gonna come back down. It's frozen again. Oh no, the Amber Alert did me in. Okay, we're good. Sorry about that, guys. Thank you, Jolene, for letting me know. Come down, and then we're gonna come across to connect to our very first line that we did. So now we have three different line weights. We have our reference lines, we have thin dark lines on the inside, and then we have a thicker dark line on the outside of the drawing. So this, honestly, if we're only doing pencil, is a finished drawing. Congrats, everybody. If you wanna get fancy, we can get fancy too. So I have some really nice Prisma colors. I got these a while back as a present and I love them. So we're gonna add some yellow. We're gonna add, let's see, some red and let's add some blue while we're at it. So I really love trace, oh God, they just went blind. I really love trace paper because I feel like 
It's a really good multi-use paper. It takes lead really well. It works really well with graphite. Markers look really wonderful on it as well. Um, so I, because I like to work in a lot of pencil and I like to work in a lot of markers, it's my go-to. But you could get some fancy marker paper if you want to and have just as much fun. So we're going to follow the same kind of color standards that we had for our drawing, but I'm going to do my own thing as well. So with markers, what I like to do is I like to try to go in the same direction all the way down. And you want to make sure that you're staying within the lines. For the edges, I'll normally go in with the smaller one and just like make sure that I'm being really precise to go all the way to the edge of the line. Same thing on the other side. Perfect. From there, let's go in with yellow. So if this one was going in the direction of the building, let's have this one follow that same idea. So we're gonna start at the bottom and just go all the way across. Maria, someone says, can you mention all the tools that you used at the end of the meeting? Totally. Thank you so much, Jolene, for letting me know. I will totally go through everything that I used. We didn't use a lot, which is the really nice thing. We, as of now, I'll just go through, but I'll also mention it at the end. As of now, we've used a case of lead, like um, graphite pencils, ranging from 6B, I think, all the way up to 6H. We've used a 45 degree triangle, which is small. I personally prefer the small ones to the large ones because I think that the large ones can be really clunky. And also, I didn't mention this, but I totally should have. Sometimes you don't even realize it, but there's lead, like graphite little particles all over your triangle. So if you find that that's an issue, that sometimes when you move the triangle, it's smudging your drawing, what you can do is you can take some of the trace paper and you can wrap your triangle with the trace paper. And then that way it won't smudge. It's really cool. So pro tip. Um, the other things we've used are a, we've used a pencil sharpener. We've used some markers, some Prismacolors, because I personally like Prismacolors. But you can honestly use some freaking Crayolas, like have fun with it. There you go. So what I decided to do was have all of the shapes that are going in that direction have the same color. So that's why this part of the building and that part of the building are both in yellow. So I'm going to come over here and do the same thing on this side. There you go. And then we're gonna make the roof red. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in this direction for this side and in that direction for the other side. So we're just gonna use the chunky side of the marker. In general, I don't like using the full chunky side because you get some of these little like thicker edges. So that was on me for being lazy and not going little by little. But you, you'll learn to, you know, find your style. There we go. Okay, and then this time I'm not going to be lazy so that I don't have that ugly 
really, really fat stroke. So I'm gonna go in really gently, a lot slower, but you know, sometimes I preach patience and yet sometimes even myself, I can't be patient enough to go slowly with my markers. Okay, there we go. And then you're gonna go in and blend it with the smaller edge. Okay, so we filled it in with marker. It looks cool, but we can't see any of our line work anymore, right? Like it's really hard to tell. So we're gonna go on top of the lines that we did with marker. So the next tool that I'm going to use, I had to run and get my pencil back, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the next tool that I'm gonna use is actually some microns. So microns are kind of like marker pens in the sense that they come in, you can see how much I've used them. They're really hard to read. So this one's a number one. I don't know if you can see that really well with the light, but it's a number one. And then this one over here is a number five. These are my two favorites. I feel like the number one is a really, really thin line that works really well for the inside lines that we're gonna do. And then the number five is a really nice thick line, which is what we're gonna use for the outside of the drawing. So we're gonna go in and just, you know, fill in some of these lines like we have been, you know, it's nothing new. Here we go. So right now I'm doing the inside lines. And like I said, I'm doing it with my number one micron. I find that with markers, like some markers, if, they're, if they have a lot of ink in them, you might wanna give them like a second. You know what I mean? You don't wanna just move your stuff or move your hand or anything over it. You wanna give it a second to dry. Because if you don't, it might smudge and then you're going to regret it because <laughs> it's going to look terrible. <laughs> okay, here we go. So instead of pulling towards the, the line that I just drew, I'm going to pull back away from it. Just in case it needed a second to dry. There we go. We're gonna do, come over here to do the top one. Come over here to do this one. Give it a second. And then we're gonna do our last two lines. So here, again, half of this line is outside, is the edge of the drawing. And this little chunk is inside, is inside the drawing. So we're only gonna use the number one up until that point of intersection. So we're just gonna go from here over. And then the other line is gonna be in our number five micron pen. So let me go in and do the outside. So right here. Normally you don't wanna drag with your pencil being vertical or with your pen being vertical. The reason why I'm doing it is because these pens are so old <laughs> and I have not replaced them and I really should. So the only way that they write is if I hold them almost you know, perpendicular to the paper, which is not good for both the paper or my pen. So I really need to go out and buy some new ones. So yeah, they, they haven't dried out, which is the worst part, is that they're still good, but sometimes you still need to replace them, even if they're good. Because this one is a thicker line, I'm definitely gonna give it a little bit longer to dry. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I think I missed one, I just realized that. 
I missed one line on the inside that I'm going to go in and fix right here. Perfect. Okay. Now we continue. <laughs> so here again, we're just going to go until the point of intersection. Oh no. And then we're going to come up. There you go. Come up on this side. And then we connect on the other side. And then we're done with the marker portion of our drawing. Perfect. Right there. Yeah. And there you go. Look at that. It looks so cute. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I'm happy for myself. Like even <laughs> just seeing it come out, it looks really nice. So from here, huh? Add a person. Yeah. So that's, that's the fun thing is that now that we've drawn our building, we can go in and doodle on top of it. Let's say that this is a drawing that you were doing to like help explain a concept or help draw to, you know, explain an idea. We don't know how big this building is, you know? This could be tiny, this could be giant. A good way to show scale and proportion is to add a person. I know that we sent out some scaly stickers um, this past summer in our welcome day goodie bags. So those are a few examples of the kind of doodles you can do. You know, you can make somebody that looks like this. You could make somebody that looks like that. You can make, you know, a guy that's like really chunky and then you give him a little head. Like any type of scaly is good or works. Um, sometimes you want to do, an, if you're doing something that's family oriented, you could do an adult and then you can make a little kid, you know, make a little smaller one, do a toddler, make a little chunky toddler too, if you want to do a chunky toddler. Um, but yeah, so we're going to draw in a scaled person. So if I remember correctly, I think the building, you know, realistically, you'd probably only get up this high to the building. It's a pretty tall shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw our person right here in the inner like corner. And he's going to be, you know, I think that might be good. So I'm doing it in pencil first, just so that I can visualize the size. I think he looks a little bit too big. Okay, I'm going to try again. Maybe sharpen my pencil is what I need to do as well. Ah, okay. Let's try again. It looks like he might be, I think that's good. And then his head right there. Okay, let's do this. I've, once you commit, you got to commit. No turning back, especially with markers. <laughs> there you go. And then we're going to fill in his body so that we can see him against the backdrop. So that's one kid. Let's draw in another student. So our next student is just going to be right over here. Fill in their little bodies. We're going to do a third student right over here. Oh, well, this guy came out small. Let's make him a little bit bigger. So firstly, let's make his head bigger and then we're gonna make his body match. There we go. Um, let's do a little man over here. There we go. I wanna make his body bigger too. Okay, cool. So you can see we added some people and all of a sudden it looks lively. It looks like a place you could go to. I could imagine myself in that building hopefully if there wasn't a pandemic, but you know, <laughs> that's life. <laughs> so we've drawn our building. We used, once again, to go through the steps that we did for our drawing today. We started off washing our hands. Very important to wash your hands. Your hands have dirt, grease, oils. Even if you think, oh, I'm not gonna touch the paper, you're gonna have to touch the paper. Everybody touches the paper. 
And if you touch the paper and the paper is oily, and then you draw on top of oily paper, your lines are going to look smudgy no matter how sharp your pencil is. So wash your hands, it's really important. Second thing to do is you're gonna tape down your piece of paper. You don't want your paper to be moving around or shuffling under your triangle. You want it to stay exactly where it needs to be to get the drawing done. From there, we drew a reference line. Let me highlight this reference line once again. I'll use a 6B just to make sure that it's really, really dark and that everybody can see it. So this line, was not part of our drawing in the traditional sense of like part of the drawing, but it was very important because we used it the entire time to line up our triangle to it and make sure that our lines were perpendicular, that our lines were at a 45 degree angle and whatnot. So this horizontal line is gonna be very useful when doing an axon to make sure that everything lines back up at the very end. From there, we used an HB pen. You could either use a pencil or you can use, you know, leads and a lead holder. Um, if you have a lead holder, I don't think I have it still on from when I used to draft with a lead holder. Um, let me see if I can find it. If not, Yeah, never mind. I don't have my lead holder on me, but these are what leads look like. They normally come in a little case. Um, they'll normally say, like, for example, this one's a 4H. Let's see if it'll focus. It's a 4H. And then what you do is you pop them out and then you put it into your lead holder. And then there's this like weird mechanical sharpener. So you'll like shove the lead holder into the sharpener and just like shh. So these are perfectly as good if you don't like using pencils and sharpeners. The nice thing about the lead holder is that the sharpener comes in like a closed case. So when you sharpen it, all of the little shavings go into that case. So you don't have to worry about doing this to protect your drawing. So from there, we started drawing the reference lines using a HB. Once we started to get the reference lines going, we darken them with a 3B. As you can see here, we have a little 3B. Then from there, we made sure that the dark ones, the, the dark lines on the outside, really popped using an HB pencil. So these are the things that we've used so far. We have a ruler, a triangle, three pencils. After we did the pencils, we went in with three markers of various colors. We used a red, a yellow, and a blue. I personally like Prismacolor, but you can do any color you want. We also occasionally sharpened, make sure to sharpen, that's really helpful. And then lastly, to make sure that the lines showed after we did the marker, is we used some micron pens. That's all we needed to do our drawing today. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but I think that we're done. We have a finished result and it looks really great. There's a question, is there a difference between drawing with pencils and mechanical pencils? Um, so your traditional mechanical pencil that you buy at Office Depot is not a quality pencil that you should be using when drawing an architectural drawing of this nature. The reason why I say that is because it's not the thickness that you need, if that makes sense. So if you look at this lead, it's super thick. You know, it's really, it's a chunky lead. It, it, it has some heft to it. And the reason why is because you're gonna go through lead really quickly. And then in addition to that, the, for example, this is a 4H. So the traditional mechanical pencil that you'd find at Office Depot probably wouldn't come with a large variety of lead um, densities that you'd be able to use either through a kit that comes with, you know, 10 or so, or buying the individual leads at Texas Art or another drawing store. So if you're going to use a mechanical pencil, I recommend that you go out and invest in a high quality lead holder is what it's called. And then you go out and buy, you know, three or four of these that you can just keep on hand and you can swap them out 
swabbing out leads is really easy to do. Um, and then get yourself a really nice high quality lead sharpener. It looks like a little, you know, cylinder that you shove the pencil in and then you sharpen it. So that's what I would recommend if you're going to go the mechanical route rather than the, the wood pencil route. Do we have any other questions or requests? If you have requests for our future tutorials, you can also request. Okay. I don't think we do, right, Jolene? No. We're okay. there. Cool. I don't want to keep people here too long if we don't have to. Um, again, my name is Maria Noguera. Thank you so much for taking time out of your afternoon to come and draw with us. Um, drafting is a really wonderful experience. If you can, you know, get used to it and learn to do it by hand, it can be really relaxing. Sometimes drafting on the computer can get really boring and tedious, but being able to do it physically is a really good way to practice your skills and practice your craft. So I definitely recommend that everybody at some point try to draw an axon using all of the tools that we have here today. Um, I am president of Alpha Rho Chi, the architecture and allied arts professional fraternity on campus. If you'd like to get to know us, just send us a message on Instagram. We'd be happy to chat with you or hang out, either one. I know that things are tough and finding connection anywhere is useful. But yeah, just hit us up. Um, like I said, we're gonna be doing four of these little tutorial training sessions. Our first one was drawing by hand. Our second one is going to be drafting on the computer. So we're gonna finish the drawing. We're gonna do the other half on uh, an online, on an internet version of like that. We're gonna be screen sharing our screen. And then our third one is going to be 3D modeling the shape. So we're gonna show you how to do solid draft, like modeling, in Rhino. And then our fourth one is going to be exporting those drawings, taking them into Illustrator, and doing something very similar to this, applying color and applying, you know, some graphics on top of it. So if you would like to join us, keep note of those dates. We'll probably post them again in the future when we do our future tutorials. And if you'd like to re-watch this, we're going to be posting the recording of today's video on our YouTube channel. So just keep an eye out for our YouTube channel as well. Um, with that, I'm going to let everyone go and end the meeting. So thank you so much. Bye, everybody.